I have a, a coin collection, Canadian pennies, nickels, dimes, quarters. I haven't looked at it in years, but that's a whole other story. I also have some coins in pottery dishes, uh, some nickels, some dimes, quarters. I have a sheep bank that's full of uh, loonies and toonies, and I have a bag of coins from various places around the world. We used to have pocket full of change, but since this pandemic started, everything I buy is either online or I use my tap on, on my credit card. One feature that pretty well every coin has is an image of a, of a person or an object that is significant to the country. Uh, to the south of us, American coins, um, uh, George Washington or Thomas Jefferson, uh, Abraham Lincoln, uh, Canada, most of our coins have the queen on them. Other nations usually have their, their king or their national symbol. In, in the time of Jesus, the, the image of Caesar on coins represent the one who was to be worshipped or, or given tribute. Uh, and so there was symbols, there was images uh, that represented values, you know, liberty, in God we trust, key historical events or geographical places, you know, a lion for Ethiopia. The reign of emperors has, has mostly ended. There are a few places where some still rule like they're an emperor. And we live in a, a democracy or a quasi-democracy where elected officials uh, tend not to demand worship. And yet commitment to politics and commitment and loyalty to political parties borders on religious belief. And too, too often we've made politics ultimate. Matthew records this story in uh, Matthew 22. This is verse 15 and following. Then the, the Pharisees went out and laid plans to trap him, to trap Jesus in his words. So they sent out their disciples to him along with the Herodians. Teacher, they said, we know that you're a man of integrity. You know, talk about buttering him up with fake flattery. And that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. You aren't swayed by others because you pay no attention to who they are. You know, just make you want to gag. Tell us then, what's your opinion? Is it right to pay the imperial tax to Caesar or not? But Jesus, knowing their evil intent, said, You hypocrites, why are you trying to trap me? Show me the coin used for paying the tax. And so they brought him a denarius. And he asked them, Whose image is this? And whose inscription? Caesar's, they replied. Then he said to them, Give back to Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God what is God's. And when they heard this, they were amazed. And they went away and left him. The question that we ask as followers of Jesus is not, should we pay our taxes, but rather are our loyalties and everything we value secondary to the Lord of all? See, the Herodians, they came to, to test Jesus. And, and honest people come to Jesus not with fake flattery, but with real questions. Not to trick, but to learn, to question, to discover. But Jesus teaches both the Herodians and his own disciples. The question on the surface is about taxes. Is ta taxation legitimate, we ask? And sometimes people get stuck there, and we get the whole left-wing, right-wing, liberal, conservative, socialist, free market debate, which is totally missing the point of what Jesus addresses. Jesus understands that this is a trap. It's a red herring. So he asks for a coin. Whose image is on the coin? Caesar's. So pay taxes to whoever is on the coin. And then Jesus adds, and give back to God what is God's. The people and symbols printed on coins are, are not to be worshipped, not to be revered, not to be placed before the one to whom we give our life, our all. See, money so easily distracts us. You know, we need uh, money to function in our world, to buy the things we need, housing and food and clothes. Uh, we want stuff really cheap, and then we complain that people aren't paid enough. We want stuff made in Canada but we don't want assembly line work. We want health care and roads and safety nets, but we don't want to pay taxes. We want a clean environment. We don't want to pay for the environmentally friendly fuels. And this gets to the point of the scene with Jesus. Money so easily distracts us. You know, listen to the political baits that go on. Who gets the money? Who decides who gets the money? And who and what is the money spent on? And Jesus says, or at least implies, that taxation is a valid way for governments to raise funds. In fact, they don't have any other way. 
But notice that Jesus doesn't get sidetracked by that discussion. There is a valid place for talking about taxes and finances. In fact, Jesus talked more about money than he did about heaven. And I would suggest that's one of the reasons why Paul tells us to pray for those in authority over us. They're making difficult decisions about money and limited resources. And we've seen so much of that over this last year. And we see that being worked out and will, it will be worked out over the years to come. And Jesus says, so give back to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and to God what is God's. Taxation belongs to, to, to Caesar, but everything else belongs to God. Notice the coins and the bills that you have in your pocket. Maybe the imagery on your credit cards that pass through your hands today. Look at the words and images and consider how they reflect the gospel and how they contradict the gospel. And next time you buy something, whether it's online or in person, what does that say about where you place your ultimate loyalty? What things, ideas, or even people are you tempted to put before God?